Hello, welcome to today's Stimco Tech Talk. My name is Brian Perigo. I'm the Strategic Accounts Manager for the Central U.S. Uh, if during the presentation you have any questions, feel free to use the, the chat box. We'll also add some links within that chat to any you know, material that I might reference. Uh, in today's Tech Talk, we'll be going through the wheel in, utilizing Guardian HP and Sentinel technology. When you're driven by something, you don't need to be reminded of what gives you purpose or where your true north lies. You just know because you've been doing it for as long as we have. And along the way, we built a reputation too for making the roadways safer. And now it's time to embrace it by refocusing and getting back to doing what we do best. Stemco Wheel End and Kingpin products that perform exceptionally, last longer, and save our customers money. Because that's what you get when you're driven by safety. Welcome back. Today's tech talk is gonna be focused on wheel-in products. Stimco Seals have been serving the industry for 70 years. And as part of that, we are now OE with 80% of trailer manufacturers. All that's due to the R&D that we've done and the very ultra low warranty rates that we have. Uh, today specifically, we're gonna be covering Guardian HP and Sentinel technology. These two products combined with our, our bearings and Pro Torque and or Zip Torque uh, create a package that's called our PPS Plus package, which is an extended warranty for OE and aftermarket. The Guardian HP seal is a spindle installed seal. It's a little bit different installation than some of the other seals that we featured in our tech talks. Uh, this is the numbering system, so if you notice a 7 in the prefix, it's always a trailer. If it's 8, it's a, uh, a steer. If it's 9, it's a drive. And then the last 4 gives you the, the hub configuration that you're working with or the spindle type. And then also you'll see our, our tool number here. And on the tool numbers, we always have the, the seal number, so you have that cross-reference. On the back, we have installation procedures in three different languages. So if you, for, you forget something we mentioned today, you have that as a, as a reference. The seal itself will come wrapped like this so that it's protected from any corrosion or dust or contamination before installation. Uh, this seal is, like I mentioned, spindle installed and it, and it does have an extra wear ring to protect the axle. So it is preferred in a lot of trailer manufacturing and, and just other people that wanna have that extra protection on their spindle. And this is what we'll be installing today with a, with a Sentinel hubcap and a Stimco bearing and a a zip torque axle fastener. Now start disassembly. We'll start by putting on some our PPE. Uh, you'd want this, you know, on jack stand secured properly. Uh, initially, you'd probably be looking at this system, verifying that there's there's a uh, proper lubricant. You may actually want to. It's never a bad idea to to get an in-play reading prior to doing the job. Uh, but in this case, we would assume that the seal is already leaking and we're going to be tearing it down, but it's always a good, uh, good practice to, to check. Remove our axle fastener. In this case, it's a zip torque nut. Our bearing. All right, prior to getting in the seal removal and all that, we'd want to inspect our, our spindle. Um, make sure we don't have any, you know, Real nasty burrs or cuts or anything like that. Inspect your threads. Uh, the threads may need to be just cleaned up with a, a wire brush or potentially could need a, you know, a thread chasing tool to, to clean up the threads like this. Make sure your keyway is clear. Every nut system that you'll be using will utilize this keyway for, for locking. And then the, the most common wear point is going to be on the bearing journals. So normally, 
you know, guys will feel this and see if they feel anything. Uh, and oftentimes on the outer bearing journal, you might feel a little bit of a flat spot. But the proper way of measuring this is to use a micrometer and take a measurement on the top and the bottom. And then from side to side, use this, this second, me this measurement here is what you would use as a baseline. And you subtract this measurement from that measurement and get an idea of how much is worn off the bottom. Uh, if that's more than six to ten thousandths, it, it's time for a replacement on your, on your spindle. Uh, after that, this, the seal that, or the hub that, uh, the seal that was in the hub prior was a, a Guardian HP seal, like what we we're going to be installing. And it'll leave this, uh, axle ring on the, on the spindle shoulder, which will need to be uh, removed prior to installation. This can't be reused. Uh, the best way to remove this is just using a, a ball peen hammer and flatten it out a little bit. You'll essentially oval it. So lots of times we see people using a chisel and a hammer, and it's real easy to cut a leap path just to cut a groove into that spindle shoulder. So by doing it this way, like I'm going to do it, it prevents you from damaging the spindle and still works very efficiently. After your axle ring has been removed, you want to go ahead and you know, inspect your, your spindle shoulder and you'd clean that up. Just use an emery cloth, uh, something beyond about 230 or higher as far as grit. You don't want nothing too aggressive because there's not a lot of tolerance on this. You just want to be able to clean this up. Uh, you don't want to use any roll lock discs or wire wheels or anything like that where you see sparks because you're obviously removing some material. All right. This has ABS on it. It's a good idea to go ahead and re reset the ABS. That way you don't have a light come on after you get done. When we get to the hub, start with seal removal. There's, you know, specialty tools like this. This is an OTC tool that's real common in a lot of shops. I tend to use something similar to this, just a, a little pry bar. The common practice that we see often is someone flipping it over and just beating on the bearings, and that's not a, not a good practice. It's really easy to, when you're driving on this, the race of the bearing, to hit this cage and damage it. So it's better to pull the seal in this manner. Move our, our other, our inner bearing. Uh, when we're inspecting the hub, uh, if we're, you know, we, we plan to reuse these bearings because they're in good shape. We had you know, verify that this uh, cup doesn't turn inside the, the hub. If this ever turns inside the hub, the hub is it needs replaced. It's not it's not repairable. You can't put a new cup in it and fix the issue. Uh, it's it's time to replace the hub. Uh, you'd clean the hub out uh, just using a, a rag and then parts washer or brake clean some type of solvent-based cleaner to, to clean that out. And then just, just let it, you know, no, no pressure washers or anything like that because you'll force water in places where you'll get some, some water trapped and it'll create rust and corrosion and some contamination. Um, you may need to clean your, your ABS ring. You want to do that just by using a wire brush and starting from the inside and working your way out just to avoid throwing stuff into that hub. Okay. We want to inspect our bearings as well. Uh, clean these with parts wash or brake clean. And then just inspect your bearings for any type of discoloration, pitting, grooves. Uh, inspect the cage real well because if this cage is bent, it, it won't, it won't spin properly and can cause a high heat scenario and some other issues. But with any, and if you have any discoloration, so lots of times when I talk to guys, they mention blue or purple. Uh, but when I ask if it's yellow, is it bad? And the common response is, no, it's fine. It's not. If there's any discoloration, the bearing is no longer uh, operational. It needs replaced. Next, we'll begin uh, the Guardian HP sill installation. So once we've, we've cleaned up our shoulder and we we're ready to install the sill, we would want to use 
just a real light coating of uh, number two non-hardening sealant. Uh, oftentimes people put that on, on the actual axle ring, but it's better to put it on the, on the shoulder. That way you're pushing that back and not towards the hub cavity. Um, the tool for, for installation, like I, I mentioned earlier, is on the box. That's this end here. The barrel is a separate piece. We can make a reference of that in the, in the Q&A or in the description of the video. And this is what's used for, for installation. You want the, you want the dry side facing back. It's, it's labeled on their dry side. And then just using a, a four to five pound hammer, you'll dry using the, the, the barrel tool here. We'll drive this on until it's flush, until you hear a tone change initially. Just kind of feel it bottom out as much as you can hear it. And then you want to verify that this is, this is flush. And it's always a good idea just to kind of go up and down because if you run it long ways, it'll, it'll slice your finger open. So just verify that, that this is flush. I actually have a little lip here. And if you have a little lip like that, you put the tool back on, kind of lean it towards that area. Give it another tap and, and we're good now. All right. So now that our, our seal is installed onto the spindle, we're ready to start putting the hub back on. You'd start by putting your inner bearing in. This should be cleaned, inspected, and then lubricated with whatever you're using in the system. It's never a good idea to mix lubricants. You know, oftentimes people pack a bearing full of grease and then put it in an oil system, and it's not a good practice. They should have the same lubricant throughout the whole procedure. So if this was oil, you'd just dip it in oil. If it's a uh, semi-fluid grease, it just needs to be put in a packer and packed with grease, but it should be pre-lubricated. A really good practice when you begin docking this hub onto this spindle, if you got your inner bearing in, is to have your, your nut and your outer bearing ready. Have it ready to go. There's one key component of this is this needs to be installed as one piece. It should never be installed separately. And when you start installing the hub onto it, you want to just take care not to pull that seal away from the from the actual code, or the actual ring. Get your right outer bearing started. Line up our keyway and then start the installation of our zip torque. We then begin our 211 procedure. So initially, seating this, this sill by torquing the 200 foot-pounds. Initial torque is always 200 really with any nut system outside of something that is uh, in a pre-adjusted system. You'd spin the hub at least one full turn, re-torque, and we do that three times in total. Uh, first time we're initially seating the seal, the second time we're really making sure those, those bearings are positioned evenly, and the third time we're kind of double checking ourselves. After that we want to Back it off one full turn. A key note here is after you back that off, do not spin the hub. You'll essentially undo what you just did as far as positioning those bearings. We then re retorque. We then retorque to 100 foot pounds. Again, while spinning. 
again three times. After doing our 100 three times while spinning, we need to do our final back off. So as I mentioned at the beginning, the 2-1-1 procedure, 200, 100, and then the final back off is one face mark. So there's some uh, indicators on here as just a point of reference. What I typically do is just line up a hubcap hole so I know where I'm kind of starting and where I'm ending. And I'll just back this up from, from uh, where it starts to the the next stopping point, just using that as a point of reference. Some people use a Sharpie or something like that to create a mark. Uh, I just kind of mark it with my thumb and then I'll take it to that hubcap hole. Right there. And then we need to verify that we got proper in play by using a dial indicator. This is a magnetic based dial indicator. We set this up on the end of the spindle here. Uh, with the, the dial actually on the face of the hub. And we just want to put it in a place where we can you know, make sure that we, we miss any hub cap holes. You want to turn this 45, about 45 degrees while we're pulling out, take a measurement, while pushing in, take a measurement, and then you add those two measurements together and we need to be between one and five thousandths. In this case, we're at two thousandths, we're, we're very good. So I do want to kind of recap what we just went through and show the zip torque nut so you can see this. These are the, the indicators I was talking about for the final back off. But also on here you can see there's our website. We're stemco.com slash 211. That'll take you to a YouTube video showing you the installation procedure for this nut. But the 211 again, 200 while spinning three times. Torquing it 200 three times, 100 three times while spinning, and then one face mark back. All right. We then we just need to install our hubcap. We're going to be installing a, a Sentinel hubcap. This is an oil Sentinel hubcap. We have pretty well every variation of this hubcap uh, in a composite and grease, semi-fluid grease. Uh, when we install this and install like any other hubcap. The, the difference with this type of cap is that it has uh, the Sentinel cap in it that's built into it, so you don't want to pry this out on this on this model. Uh, it's got a duckbill valve to allow it to purge when it needs to purge as it builds pressure, but it has Gore-Tex in it to prevent any water infiltration. We also have these in an ESP Plus, which is a removable type cap, and an ESP, which is a different variation of this. Well, I'll show a, a little video that kind of demonstrates the, the red rubber plug versus the Sentinel versus the ESP, ESP Plus. All right, for this demonstration, what we're, what we're simulating is uh, when the, there's heat generated inside the hub assembly and you have uh, pressure that needs to be released uh, with a red rubber, rubber plug that's in a standard hub cap, you'll see immediately that we have some, uh, some bubbles coming out of this because we're just putting a, a pump on it and I got about a half PSI of pressure into the, the cavity and you'll see uh, instantly that the, it starts bubbling. If we flip this over and we uh, change this from a pump to a vacuum and we'll start having uh, adding a vacuum to this. Now what this simulates is basically the opposite. When you have a, a hot hub assembly and it gets cooled rapidly, then it will create a vacuum in the system much like when a, a trailer comes off the road and backs into a flooded dock or uh, a unit comes right off the road and goes right to a wash bay and gets pressure washed on that cap. Uh, this is something that'll simulate that. So as we, as we start creating some vacuum here, instantly you see water just spraying into the, into the hub cap, into the hub cavity as well. This, this has about 10 PSI on it, and you can, you can see that the water will just continuously enter into the hub cavity. And this will, this will continue to occur, this water will continue to come in uh, until the, the pressure stabilizes. The 
this is uh, obviously a bad scenario because it, it creates the the common thing people see with their lubricant where it becomes milky. And it's water infiltration. Water's gotten into the oil, so it becomes milky. And it can also just break down all the properties of the lubricant, so then it's not actually functioning the way the lubricant should to protect against heat scenarios, so it can cause some premature failure as well. All right, so now we are going to uh, show the, the ESP plug. Now, this is not the ESP Plus, but just the, the standard ESP plug. So you'll see that it's it's red and blue. Uh, this, this is still dustproof, but it's not waterproof. So as we add pressure, it, it will instantly begin venting as it should at about a half PSI. Um, but then conversely, when we when we put a vacuum on it and we start you know, applying vacuum to this, um, it's it's water resistant, so it'll prevent some water from getting in, but it doesn't have the Gore-Tex membrane that's in the Sentinel technology and the ESP Plus plug. So as we, we start creating this uh, this vacuum, we don't have any water infiltration at about 5 PSI, PSI but once we get to 10 PSI, you'll, you'll start seeing water uh, fill in that hub cavity as well. And so we're, we're back to that same scenario. So we, we'd recommend this for, for tractors that aren't typically going to get submerged in water, but with trailers that often back into, do into docks that could be flooded and could be submerged in water, uh, the ESP Plus is, is the application that's typically recommended for that reason. All right, we'll now uh, demonstrate using the, the integrated Sentinel hub cap. So this, this is a hub cap that's available for grease. Uh, we have for, for grease applications, for oil applications, and then we you can get this as an integrated hubcap, but you can also use the, the ESP Plus plug, which is still a replacement plug, but has that the same properties as the Sentinel hubcap, which is a duckbill valve, and it has that Gore-Tex membrane that makes it fully waterproof, uh, as opposed to just a standard ESP that, that doesn't have that membrane. So this is going to be fully dustproof, fully waterproof, and, and really protect your wheel in on wheel ends that could be you know, potentially submerged in water. So like the other ones, once we start building some pressure here at a half PSI, it, it vents as it should. So it, it'll, you know, still vent as pressure builds. We don't have to worry about a sill failure caused by built pressure or anything. It, it vents as needed as soon as possible. But then uh, conversely to the, the other plugs that you'd seen, um, as we start to create a vacuum on this, and we actually can take this fairly high. We'll, we get as high as, looks like about 15 PSI still, still yet, which is a, a tremendous amount of vacuum that wouldn't naturally occur, I don't think. We're still not going to get any water infiltration whatsoever. So this is fully water, uh, uh, waterproof as, a, as opposed to just resistant. It is a waterproof and dustproof will end when using this, this type of hubcap. I'd mentioned, you know, the system using it with oil because that's the system we were using. If, if we were using semi-fluid grease, you'd use a cap like this that's solid. And this is a template. Prior to putting the outer bearing in, you can butt this up there so that it just keeps it from going out. And the, with semi-fluid grease, you'd want to fill uh, half the hub cavity. So from, you know, three to nine, it should be filled with uh, semi-fluid grease. And this just helps contain it. Uh, once you get it to the level you need it, you would slide, you know, take this off, slide your uh, outer bearing in real quick, and then begin your, your torque procedure. And then with a the cap, with a semi-fluid cap, you should just put a small amount in the bottom here. Just make sure not to cover your vent. So just a small amount in here to just protect for corrosion more than anything and make sure you get a little, it'll get a little bit on that outer bearing and, and your, uh, your, nut, your axle fastener. So we then install our hub cap. And you install this just like you would a standard hubcap, always use a new gasket. And you want to make sure to, in, when you're installing this, you want to do it in a star pattern. So going across from each other, this prevents you from pinching the gasket and creating a, a leak path. Lots of times when you have a hubcap that's leaking, if you look at it closely, you'll see a little void on the back of the hubcap and you might see a little crease in that gasket. And that's what that's caused from, or that's how that's caused when someone just goes around the, the horn tightening it. So you want to go in a star pattern, 
and torque it down to, to 15 to 20 foot pounds just using a 3 8 torque wrench. Once this is all buttoned up and ready to go, um, on a system like this, since you can't remove this cap, you'll have a, a port here and you're just going to fill this with oil until you get somewhere between add and full. This concludes the tech talk today. Um, I want to say thank you for everyone that joined. We'll have a link in the chat for uh, to get your will-in certificate. Um, also, if you have any questions, we'll hang out and you can answer. You can ask questions. We can answer those for you. Also, if you're watching this on YouTube, you missed the live Q and A. Uh, we'll have some some links in the description. Also, please like, comment, share, uh, subscribe. We appreciate it. Uh, I want to again say thank you for letting Stemco help you make the roadways safer. Appreciate it.